don't set up currently. So basically, we're going to try and make it what we have. So let's come closer. Are you, are, you come, are you come to the session or are you just... I, I'm peeking in for a few minutes, so I think it's your train. Can you do me a favor? I know um, Maria is trying to get in. Yeah. I don't know. This, they said the Zoom link is online. I don't know what the Zoom link is. Can you send it over? If you go to the IGS website. Okay. The guys don't, they don't, they don't think we're helpful with that. So they just oh, send really? to the website and get the link. Okay. So send to Maureen, Maureen the, link, yeah, the yeah. Zoom link. I know she's trying to. She's probably, probably yeah. starting to try okay. to get in. Yeah. Okay. Is it level 13? Is it level 13? It is 11.31. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our dynamic coalition um, for small and developing states in the internet economy round table. That's not so round. Um, we're going to have to, I guess, um, like we do in the small island states, adjust accordingly based on our resources. Thank you. But we're good at that, so let's, we'll just adjust. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is that we are, since we don't have mics at our desk, we're going to have to share mics. So I'm going to pass. So we just have to use these mics and just pass them around. Um, yeah. Yeah, so whenever you're ready to talk. All right. So let me have a seat. So thanks all for, I know it's, gonna, it's normally a small group of us um, for some, from Sid. Um, I believe we have, is Maureen, have you got Maureen on us yet? All right, so we should have at least one remote um, participant from um, Cook Islands, and I believe there are a few others coming in from the other islands. So let's hope they're, they're joining us. Um, we have some help. Is there anybody online, remote, as yet? Yeah. Maureen is on. Maureen is on our Hilliard. Hi, Maureen. Hello. Uh, anyone else? All right, great. Thanks. So we expect a few more to join. And uh, so this is supposed to be a working meeting, right? So if we're not presenting anything as such. Uh, but there will be interventions coming in from Maureen, who sh shortly I'll, I'll call upon her, um, and uh, myself for the Caribbean update. And uh, what we're going to do today is try and get our action plan um, sorted out and approved. And we're going to try and get our way forward done and approved in terms of what we're going to do next. So, based on, I have a throw up the agenda on screen, maybe we can... Um, Get the agenda back up. That's right. So the first item um, report for from SIDS on local IG related um, projects. And for this, if Maureen is ready, can you ask if Maureen is ready? All right. Maureen, can you um, intervene and give the update from the Pacific perspective? Good morning, Maureen. Early morning for you. We need remote audio. Like plan. Hi everyone, this is Maureen Hilliard from the um, from the Pacific. I've unmuted my um, my Zoom. I'm just wondering if you can hear me. Yes, yes Maureen, we can hear you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, great. Thank yes. you. Um, right from the, from the Pacific. Um, I'm not. Um, I'm not quite sure if everyone was able to um, get a copy of the of the Pacific report. Um, no. Uh, oh, okay. 
um, we, um, I, I hope you can distribute it actually, um, uh, or I can I can send it to people who, um, uh, uh, if they if they would like to, um, or or um, if you're members of the um, Internet Society, they would actually sort of like to put it onto their uh, latest um, um, I, ISOC um, newsletter. Apparently they. They uh, quite like the fact. I mean, it is very much related to the work that we're doing within the um, Pacific um, Pacific Islands um, chapter of the Internet Society, plus the work that uh, the Pacific is actually involved in in ICANN. But um, there there are sort of like several um, several activities. I mean. Uh, Really, what we're trying to do is just get involved in as many different um, activities as possible related to um, to um, internet um, internet governance, and uh, it's 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 something that's actually sort of like certainly developing. But as we go through the um, as we go through the um, uh, action plan, for example, uh, some of the things that we're working on um, in relation to uh, Enhancing the uh, the work that we're doing across the uh, across the Pacific um, is actually sort of like becoming a, a little bit more uh, pro progressive, I guess, um, in relation to the uh, relationships that we're building with regional organisations. Um, and uh, I know that, for example, one of our sort of like key uh, issues is. Uh, um, establishing our re-establishing our PACI net, uh, which is the is our one sort of like opportunity to to gather together as a Pacific community. Um, but uh, when you've got sort of like 22 countries sort of like spread across the the Pacific Ocean, it it, um, it isn't an, e an easy task to sort of like try and coordinate uh, things uh, together and. Um, we do, you know, so we have to rely very much on uh, regional organisations to sort of like support, uh, you know, what we're doing and, and how we can make it more possible. Um, and uh, I think I'm very grateful for the for the support that we get for um, activities that we run in the Pacific from um, from ICANN and, and the Internet Society, um, and especially from APNIC. They've been very um, very supportive of us. Um, and dot Asia, so it's sort of like we're getting, you know, sort of like Asia Pacific support to to, um, to in, into into our work, um, and and now we're sort of like branching into uh, support from APTLD and uh, Internet New Zealand. So, um, you know, I think that this is where you know the work that we do isn't just sort of like um, our, you know, centered focus on. Um, on a, on a particular country or, you know, sort of like a small section, we have to look at what we can gather together um, from across the um, from across the region itself. Um, and uh, um, one of the things I've just actually sort of like swapped over from the, um, the uh, School of Internet Governance uh, session, um, uh, is it next door or wherever, but um, uh, I was very pleased to sort of like hear about the... Uh, the uh, SIG that has been established in Trinidad and Tobago, um, and being a small island uh, state community, um, I think that it'd be, it'd be um, I'd be really interested to see how that was established and how we might incorporate that into our um, into our regional sort of like conference sort of uh, that we're trying to organise. Um, and I, I do note that in the um, that in the audience, um, Ganella Asprink from our region is in the. Is in the is in the uh, group. I'm really pleased to see her, um, our latest uh, MAG member. And um, so, congratulations to you, uh, Gabella. Um, nice to see you. Um, and I'll I'll stop there, um, uh, Tracy. If there's uh, right. if there are any questions. All right. Thanks, thanks Marie. Marie. Um, um, yes. Yeah, so. so I wanted, I wanted to get Maureen up early because I know it's late for you and in case you need to drop off. Um, so before I allow you to drop off if you need to, is, are there, does anybody have any questions for Maureen on the Pacific um, update on um, last year's work? Any questions for Maureen? Otherwise we're going to move into the introduction, the actual introduction spot. 
Any, Any questions, questions or comments, or comments on Maureen? Maureen? I oh. certainly won't be dropping off. Um, okay, okay, excellent. Oh, great. So we, fantastic, fantastic. Thanks. thanks. All, right, All right, so, so we did a little bit of a back to front, so I'm now going to ask everyone, since we have the, as, as normal with our DC, to sort of introduce themselves. And obviously, we're going to have a little challenge with the mic, so let's see how resourceful we can be. So I'm going to ask my colleague from the Maldives, who I met yesterday, to to introduce himself and maybe um, as you're there, maybe you can give an update since I haven't seen the Maldives at the IGF thus um, recently. So you can give an update as to what's happening in that part of the world. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my name is Sharif. I'm the permanent secretary uh, of the science and technology ministry. Um, our ministry is just recently established. Uh, in fact, we're just celebrating our first year. So for us, everything is uh, very new. Um, this is our, our first IGF um, and our first uh, uh, SEEDS working session in IGF. So we are looking forward to um, uh, engaging this civil society in Maldives as well now. In the past, um, the internet governance um, has been, I guess, domain of the government and domain of the uh, ISPs. Uh, and civil society's voice in governance of the internet has been negligible in Maldives. Um, this, this couple of days here has inspired me. So I'm looking forward to establishing the Maldives uh, IGF uh, in the coming year and connecting with all of you. And I'm hoping to actually, um, I mean, from, from, the, from the few faces here, except from uh, my brother here, uh, everybody else is new to me. So I'm hoping to become part of this family. Thank you. Thank you. And you could pass it, Mike. But um, before you move on, how, how, how many islands are in the Maldives? Uh, let, me, let me briefly uh, describe Maldives for you. Um, Maldives. Um, is, is known to, as a small island developing state. But for us, we describe Maldives slightly differently. We describe Maldives as a large ocean uh, developing state. Because in fact, if you look at a map, you will not find Maldives. Not because it's not there, because the land mass of Maldives is less than 1% of Maldives. Wow. And on a map, you only draw the land. Everything else is blue, right? So for us, we, uh, the country is big. It's comparable to the United Kingdom. Um, but you cannot draw it because the landmass is small. We're talking about uh, about 1,200 islands, on which about 200 islands are inhabited by, uh, by Maldivians. And then another 200 are dedicated resort islands. Um, so for us, uh, the biggest challenge we have is um, the changing climate, particularly, I mean, everybody talks about the sea level rise, but for us, the immediate emergency is already there. It's what we call extreme weather. When it rains, it floods, and this didn't happen before. And when it's, uh, when it's hot, islands run out of drinking water. So we have, uh, we have ships that are deceleration plants just going from island to island supplying water. So this kind of, and the end, so what happens is transport is fueled by diesel, which, so while we tr give people water, we destroy the environment. A vicious cycle. Yeah. So this, this is what we are looking uh, to kind of work with. So emerging technologies is what we are looking forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kanan from uh, the Republic of Kiribati and uh, Maori. Yes, and uh, it's one of uh, the island nations in the South Pacific region. And so, uh, as Maureen speak before uh, the report on the Pacific, I, th I would just like to add on, you know, maybe uh, probably something that. Uh, we, 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 we've been doing in Kiribati in terms of like internet governance. So the, we recently talking with UNESCO to 
to deploy the, the assessment on the universality, internet universality. universality. And I, I think this is uh, what we we believe it could be a, a start of uh, building an internet governance ecosystem because in Kiribati nobody knows about internet governance. Our major challenge is uh, basically the rise of sea level. We are on the forefront of that. But uh, equally important, as we know, is the uh, uh, issues of uh, internet. No? Uh, especially on cyber security. So we will receive our submarine cable uh, in, in two years. That's the first submarine cable. And we anticipate that there will be a lot of uh, challenge. And I, uh, we, we, we recognize that these moments are the critical moments to get ourselves ready. And so for next year, we, like I said, we will work with UNESCO to deploy this assessment that will give us a it's sort of a cap analysis where should we improve ourselves in terms of the policies and uh, regulations and things around the internet governance. And so the other thing that I also like to add on to what Maureen uh, uh, said before, maybe she, she forgot to touch on this. In uh, Vanuatu, they just uh, established their internet governance office. So this is another great uh, achievement in the Pacific. So Vanuatu has taken a great leap in this, and it's, uh, it's something that we look up to, to, to try to imitate that. It's a good uh, achievement. And uh, yeah, basically that's what uh, I can say at, at this time. Yeah, thank Thanks. you, and um, just to let you know, my colleague is from Youth IGF 2016 in Guadalajara, and now here he is, government, yes. participating in the IGF, so well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let me pass it on to the current youth ambassador, Isaac. Yes, who are you? Hi, my name is Vivian. I'm a youth ambassador from Isaac, and I'm here doing the report. <laughs> the where, where are you from? Small island? No, I'm from Brazil, a big country. <laughs> but still, so it's a very important uh, discussion that we are having here since um, small islands face different kind of problems and issues that, for example, in Brazil, we would never imagine to. So it's good to be aware of what is happening around the world. Thank you. Pass me hand. Hi, everyone. I am Faye from Jamaica. Wow. I work for the telecoms regulator in Jamaica. Welcome. We, I recently noticed we, they launched the ISOP chapter in Jamaica, but I guess it's so recent that nobody's here. <laughs> but nonetheless, in Jamaica, um, we, we have a uh, competitive telecoms market, similar to Trinidad, but the competition has, a, has reduced a bit since the mergers between telecoms companies. So now we're in a state where we have to figure out how to encourage the telecoms operators to be investing more in the new technology because mobile penetration is very, it's very high. But in the rural areas, we still have a bit of problems where some persons don't have access, and even if they were to be provided access, they're still a little bit uneducated in about the potential of the internet. So we also have to look at trying to increase the literacy, digital literacy in Jamaica right now. So that's where we're at. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I just wanted to um, also underscore that um, Dalsi from Vanuatu is here, but she's not in the room yet. She's supposed to be joining us shortly, so she could. Yes, excellent. Who are you? What time? Is it afternoon? Good afternoon, everybody. I have no idea what time it is, but it's lovely to see you. Merry Christmas, everybody, in advance. So I'm Salanieta Tamanika Waimaro, but known to most of you as Sala. Hello, Sala. Yes, lovely to see all of you. Um, I, I'm originally from Fiji, Fijian, uh, but I now live in the United Kingdom. And uh, so we just launched a, a startup UK think tank called Credo Global. Uh, which is based out of the UK, pivoting off a UK-based charity, which has been in existence for 30 years. But one of the things that we're doing, of course, is um, uh, partnering with uh, the landlocked developing countries and small island developing states to better bridge the issues. And as we know, we've faced challenges on the ground, even in the Pacific, particularly in terms of traction. And so hopefully, my being in the Northern Hemisphere is to just build a bridge 
to be able to do more uh, together with local partners. But um, as Delphi is coming, Amelia Kamanalangi Muriel, who represented us in the Day Zero event, the digital uh, inclusion, uh, she's carrying the Pacific voice with respect to the, 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 uh, the thing that was held on the Day Zero event, which is the electrification, access, and um, digital inclusion. So one of the things, as my uh, colleague on my left was saying in relation to Jamaica in terms of penetration rates, one of the things we're finding is, even in uh, jurisdictions where you have 100% electrification rate like Barbados, June Paris is not here. She's, she's, she's with Dulce. Yeah, session, she right? said she's going to come. Yeah. But one, one of the things that she mentioned was that even with 100% electrification rate, they still have challenges, which leads to internet outages. And of course, the ramifications is, is, is obvious in itself. And the same thing we face in the Pacific too. Uh, even in Fiji, um, I've seen reports of within the past two weeks of severe electrical outages that have kind of crashed the comms. Eh? And the, the complaints is coming from all the IT engineers obviously, on uh, PIKISOC and on the NOG, PET NOG list, and also on the Facebook page. So one of the things I um, really would like to do is to learn from Trinidad, learn from uh, Barbados, learn from Jamaica, learn from uh, everybody, really. Gunella is in the room. She's on the mic. She'll be fighting our issues. Woohoo! Yeah, she'll be fighting our issues. And, and hopefully, one of the things we need to do, like, you know, that Day Zero event, Wisdom had to fight for three years on the Meg to get that session recognized. And it wasn't even recognized in a formal workshop. So we are hoping that we can have champions in very strategic places uh, in the Meg and also in other key areas to better bring our issues, small island developing states issues, to the fore. Because even though decisions are not made, but they're certainly influenced in terms of uh, traction, funding, prioritization, and that sort of thing. So for now, that's all I'll just say. Thank you, Sala. That's all right. That's what we're here for. Uh, my name is Toshi from Japan ISPs Association, a vice chair. So also the Japan is an island. But probably you don't know that we have uh, more than 1,000 islands. So maybe more than 300 islands that people live in. Then, uh, but we still we have so many uh, problems in Japan, so we are struggling, uh, uh, fighting for that still. Then uh, probably we can share the uh, practices or experiences. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate that. Hi everyone, I'm Abigail Antenor, or you can call me Abigail. I'm from the Philippines. Oh, yeah. And as you know, in the Philippines, we have over 7,641 islands. So <laughs> that's really a lot. And there are still some far-flung areas in the Philippines that are not connected to the internet. And what I wanted as I go back is to maybe have a sense of uh, uh, inform them what is really internet governance and to engage the youth more to tackle issues on digital inclusion, digital literacy, and such. Because uh, in the Philippines, there is, I think, a little engagement, but I think we could do this together to bring the youth more uh, in the IGF. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. And she's also a youth ambassador, ISOC youth ambassador. Ah, yes, I'm from ISOC youth ambassador. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Abigail. Hello. Uh, good morning, I can see it's still morning. Now, my name is Yunita, and uh, I'm from Kenya. Uh, now, um, I'm here because anything touching on uh, developing states it was, is of interest to me because my country is still developing. So I'm attending this forum basically is um, sort of um, a benchmark platform because uh, in my country we are in that space where we are developing cybersecurity laws, uh, data protection laws, and I believe that uh, the challenges we are facing are common. And um, with the comparison, then we'll know where we're going wrong because we are again facing so many litigations as we try to implement the laws. 
So I find this a, a platform for sharing and uh, for uh, learning new ideas and development. It's my first time at IGF. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Mike Jensen. I'm a South African based in Brazil and Portugal. And uh, in my consulting capacity, I've been lucky enough to be involved in a number of uh, studies in the Caribbean, in the Indian Ocean, in the Pacific around developing uh, uh, ICT infrastructure, the, the underlying physical infrastructure ranging from submarine feasibility studies to establishing internet exchange points and satellite connections and uh, restructuring the telecom sector. And uh, uh, this kind of turned into a personal passion for me. The small islands I find are uh, probably going to be the last to be fully connected because these very remote islands uh, with low population levels and low income levels, it's extremely difficult for uh, commercial operators to justify the investment to, to bring these people online. So what's interesting to me of recent is I've been working with the Association for Progressive Communications on uh, what we call bottom-up connectivity where uh, remote communities build their own low-cost infrastructure. They're, they're getting fed up waiting for the operators to come and connect them. So they've taken the initiative into their own hands and uh, started to build their own uh, backbone infrastructure ranging from digging fiber cables to setting up wireless networks to even setting up um, GSM mobile phone networks in remote areas where the regulations allow. And uh, we did a study last year, we visited about 12 networks in, in 12 countries and, and uh, 16 networks to document this process. And I think that this might be a very viable strategy for some of these very small island states. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Rabindra. Well, Rabindra Jagannath, Rabindra Dani Jagannath. Dani is easier to pronounce. I'm um, one of the directors, and we have a few here in this room, from the Trinidad and Tobago Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. And I'll laughingly say that I feel so insecure because we only have two islands in Trinidad and Tobago, not 600 and 2,000 and whatnot. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, it's um, interesting that the topic of small island development states is being um, explicitly addressed within the Internet Governance Forum because there are unique issues related to actually small island development states and even within the, um, the, let's say, gathering or the collection of small island development states, they're all different issues that need to be addressed. Of particular concern for me is um, because in small island states, government has a, a, a very significant role to play. Um, whether that's good or bad, it doesn't matter. It ends up government having that major role to play. And the issue is how do we influence them in really matters related to the internet? Not all um, governments understand the internet, understand how it can actually benefit the country. And our multi-stakeholder advisory group, we actually organize the internet governance forum on an annual basis we come up with concrete, re concrete recommendations, but very little of it is actually adopted by government. So the issue is, how do we get uh, to a position where we can influence our governments more positively, influence them to do what is right for their country, but using internet more effectively? Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, it's Exactly, good morning, one minute will be good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohamed Khatib, I'm a graduate of environmental governance from the University of Freiburg, and I, I'm from Egypt. I'm interested in small islands, uh, A, because it's like, as Unita has mentioned earlier, it's a developing, like, uh, I'm from a developing country, and I also am very interested in similar topics. Um, I'm also wondering how the internet economy can really help small islands whether in the Caribbean or in the Pacific or so on, and how it can help them, A, to bolster their economy, and B, to mitigate climate change and find ways where they can you know, promote their agenda as well. So. Thank you. 
Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Cristina Morales. I am from Nicaragua. Um, now I am the public policies analyst in Nicaragua for Ipandetec, an NGO based in Panama. Uh, Nicaragua is not an island. It's like a, a, it's a country in the middle of Central America that also is in the middle of America. And for example, in Nicaragua, we have uh, small projects about the internet development. Uh, we, are, we have been doing some projects for teach to the kids in the rural areas of the country how to get knowledge about the digital rights, how to prevent the, uh, <clears throat> the human traffic in the board of the country. And also we are teaching how to develop the software apps and also use the new technologies for develop the economy of the rural areas of the country. So I would like to learn about the other countries, what they are doing, how they are doing the process, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, and another youth at IGF um, graduate from 2017. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Atif Aleem. I come from India. India is a vast country comprising of around 1,200 islands, uh, which include marine, riverine, and lake uh, entities, island. And uh, the most prominent one is the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which is at the juncture of Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Sea. And I'm very uh, enthusiastic about this uh, dynamic coalition on small island developing states because uh, I, in news we read that, that though the telecom sector in the Indian island states have been uh, working as smoothly as comparable to their uh, neighbor states, like the landlocked ones, but there have been infrastructural issues in uh, uh, spreading uh, the internet services like 4G. So in two, January 2019, the Indian government, uh, along with the uh, private uh, public uh, private player public uh, pa partnership program launched a 4G services uh, sp a specific uh, uh, program in Andaman uh, Port Blair Island to upgrade uh, uh, citizens and uh, make awareness about what uh, internet is about and they are giving a free upgradation to 4G services so i look forward to discussions here in deliberations and next year i would be also hosting the youth igf summit in india so it would be great if we could uh, you know have this uh, perspective of uh, island states and how it's going to shape the uh, economy of internet in the future thank you Thank you, and you are from, uh, you, are you an ISOC? I am an ISOC Youth, Youth ambassador, ambassador from India as well, and Thank I'm note-taking for this session too. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, and my name is Gunala Asprink from Australia, which is a ridiculously large island. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm really here as a very strong friend of um, certainly the Pacific Island countries. Um, I have been involved with uh, Pacific Island projects probably over the last 10 years or so, uh, giving workshops at um, PAC INETS, which is um, the Pacific um, Internet um, uh, Conferences, and also at uh, PAC IGF, um, probably around six different countries. Uh, um, I've given workshops um, about people with disability and looking at cultural, societal barriers and what a difference um, the internet can make for people with disability to increase accessibility to education and employment. And, um, and I've done some work in Vanuatu specifically looking at uh, government websites to see how accessible they are and also um, developed a project on collecting data on mobile phone usage by people with disability in Vanuatu and uh, assisted with um, data collection across um, a number of other Pacific Island countries. So yes, I am an incoming MAG, um, MAG member, which is very exciting. So thank you very much uh, for your congratulations. Uh, maybe commiserations, we'll see. Uh, but uh, I hope to work, um, to work hard on uh, 
on uh, small island p p developing states issues, um, Asia Pacific issues, uh, disability issues, but generally to make sure that digital inclusion um, is uh, continues to be part of the IGF agenda. Thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to have a MAG member with us. Thank you, Gunella. Hi, everyone. I'm Anita Sohan. I'm from the Trinidad and Tobago MAG, along with Danny and both Tracy and, and George. So I represent government on the, on the MAG, but really Ministry of Health. So as I'll just add to what Danny was saying before. In Trinidad, we're good at developing a lot of policies and legislation, but I think a challenge for us is really implementation. And I see that as a challenge for a lot of small island development states as well, particularly because we have a resource challenge and we have other issues that, you know, people might think are more important than internet government or ICTs. So there's really a lack of understanding, especially at the, the political level in terms of driving these things forward. So. I think um, key for us is to get that political sensitization. So while multi-stakeholder collaboration is, is necessary, as Danny was saying, sometimes it falls back on government to get things implemented. So that's one of the things on what I'm really looking forward to at this session as well is to see how we could really build capacity and to try to push internet governance issues forward in each of our countries. Thank you. Hi again, everybody. Um, Nicole Peter Patterson from Caribbean Girls Hack, and she leads an NGO out of Barbados. We are focused on digital skills training for girls across the Caribbean. You're from Barbados? Yes, I am from Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> I am from Jamaica. We are Caribbean here, and. Um, very excited to welcome our colleague from GSMA, Tamara, who is here. Um, also, a member, I am a member of the Equals uh, Skills Coalition, the ITU Skills Coalition, um, with Tamara and other colleagues. And we're focused on the gender, um, on, on training girls in digital skills, as I indicated, to bridge the gender divide. Um, we have had, over the past three years of doing the hackathon, a 600 and something percent increase in terms of participants. And we are very um, happy to continue to be um, engaging with the SITS coalition so that we can benefit from the larger islands like Australia and <laughs> also the small islands. Um, uh, in terms of uh, seeing where we can have uh, best practices that we can replicate with focus being on, on, on young women and girls. Thank you. I'd just like to welcome our colleagues to the round table that's, uh, that's not so round. Um, but um, we'll come across you to introduce yourselves shortly, so stand by. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ria Yoching. I am from Trinidad um, and Tobago. Uh, but as head of a, an ICT and development nonprofit called Corvella Foundation, I get a really nice opportunity to, be, to participate in many of the development initiatives across the, across the Caribbean. Um, I also support the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States uh, in, in more specific development initiatives in the Eastern Caribbean. And in, uh, in, in those activities and initiatives, um, I support a lot of work in the area of infrastructure, um, which uh, over the past years, of course, have been, has been under tremendous pressure, particularly in the area of uh, disaster recovery and, and resilience. And, uh, and so we do have a lot of initiatives um, focusing on trying to get last mile access to, to some of the rural, rural communities, as well as emergency access, uh, which continuously it seems to be a challenge. Um, and then focusing on all of the other initiatives and, uh, and streams that overlay that, uh, the infrastructure. So ensuring that we can have uh, proper digitalized platforms and services for government, reaching people, financial services. I'm glad to see Kenya here because that's one of the, the areas that we look at to be able to, to see how that can influence uh, many, many of the, of the adoption, adoption in digital financial services in the region for financial inclusion, inclusion. then of and course entrepreneurship skills and so on. Uh, so, so it's, it's always, always good to be here to, to see what everyone else is doing and be able to collaborate. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, George Gubin, and I'm from Trinidad. I think the folks from the Trinidad group have said enough about what we do in the TT Mag. Um, and as Danny said, we're two islands, but we happen to have almost four, five representatives here for this session today. Um, I wear two hats in that I'm a director of the Trinidad and Tobago Multi Stakeholder Advisor Group, but I'm also a part of the CCTL or the DOT that manages the DOT TT domain. And I think that's a, a good strategy if you in your territories, islands, can get your CCTLD to invest in the TT MAG. Most likely, your MAG is coming from a zero bank account or nothing to invest in to have your IGF sessions. Um, I think it's a good best practice that you develop that relationship with your CCTLD. We have been sponsoring, for example, the TT MAG for three IGFs now. Uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, where the investment comes from us, but we're looking for buying from the governments and investing because of the importance of internet governance. So if there's anything that we can share with you as a group, as an individual country, island, uh, please feel free to reach out to us um, and let's share some best practices with you. Thank you. We have some, some new colleagues came in the room. Let's, yeah, go ahead. Hello, hello. Hi, I'm June Paris. I'm from Barbados. Um, I'm a member of the MAG at the United Nations. I'm also a member of the Internet Society Barbados chapter. Um, it's nice to be here with so many from the Caribbean because this is the first time I'm seeing so many all on the one roof. I thought they were absent, actually. I thought I was the only one. Anyway, um, I've been involved with the Internet Society and I've been involved with several organizations, um, Girls Power Tech, Caribbean Girls Hack, happy to see Nicole here. Um, some other, we're trying to get the girls in Barbados to be more um, computer, not even computer, IT literate, and to give them, I feel actually it's more like a confidence thing because, because of the men, because the men are so like, at the top of everything, it's nice that the girls are being encouraged to do the same thing that the men are doing, and even better. Um, my, my problem is that I can't seem to get them to come to the IGF. Um, it's because of the expense and because of lack of funding and um, other issues. Um, that is my goal for next year, to try to get as many people as possible and to try to get some funding to get these girls, these really brilliant girls, to come and see what it is at the IGF. And hopefully, before I leave the MAG, I've got one more year, I would have passed on a lot of what I know to these girls. Um, that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have two MAG members in the room, which is quite a hyper, three. Dalsi, oh, that's right. Dalsi is a MAG member. That's a high proportion. Fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amelia Kamanalangi. I'm from uh, Pacifica Nexus, uh, based in France. <laughs> um, uh, I'm here because we had a panel on the first day on uh, electricity and uh, internet penetration, uh, trying to point out that one infrastructure needs the other to be able to be sustainable. And uh, also in the Pacific with a high rate of, uh, with all uh, the climate change being an issue. So we're trying to look at the renewable, um, a sustainable renewable source of energy to coexist with the internet for good penetration and reliable as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, not sure, good afternoon or good morning? Both? Okay, maybe a good day. So my name is Talsi Baniala. I'm from Vanuatu. I am one of the MAC members. Um, my role last year is the, I'm the former regulator for Vanuatu, and I have been involved a lot in the internet governance activities in the Pacific. Uh, we actually, the one hosted the Asia Pacific uh, governance last year. And, um, and actually, the outcome of that 
um, forum, we created the Vanuatu National uh, Internet Governance, and uh, I am very, very happy to have the secretariat here who attended the sessions, and uh, we have learned a lot, and at the same time contributing with our experiences to support each other, and to see how we can help each other in the small economies. Thank you. Thank you, Dalsi, and good to see you again. All right, I think we've done the introductions. Um, as I said, this is a working session. Um, but first, maybe I could try and replicate what Maureen did by trying to give a Caribbean update as well. I could find the document, and um, I'm going to try my best to. Oh, thank you. Did you introduce yourself by that? Yes. Oh, I don't oh, I'm Tracy Hackshaw, sorry. <laughs> from Trinidad Tobago and um, one of the co-conveners or co-coordinators of the DC, along with Maureen Hilliard. All right, so just a quick update from the Caribbean. Um, I'd like to start with um, Guyana. Guyana sent an update in saying that they recently completed a skills training program for local web developers uh, to help uh, develop applications for persons with disabilities. The University of Guyana is currently exploring the possibility of integrating that program into the computer studies curriculum. Uh, part of the overall support was provided by the Ministry of Finance, who also granted VAT exemptions for persons with disabilities purchasing smart, smartphones or related devices. The Ministry also, via its agency, the National Data Management Authority, provided internet, is in the process of providing internet access to 150 communities in hinterland areas, some 250 plus miles away from the capital city, Georgetown. Now, Guyana, which is considered a small and developing state, is actually on the continent of South America. And it's uh, an, uh, uh, not a sm an island, but it's defined that way by the United Nations. So some of these um, points are very interesting from the standpoint of a um, rural um, urban divide. So 250 miles away from the capital city, Georgetown, the overall goal is to provide connectivity to close to 300 hinterland communities in the south of Guyana. The ministry is also conducting train-the-trainer train sessions to begin the process of ICT training at the community level. Um, at the CARICOM Council of Trade and Economic Development ministerial meeting in November, they agreed to propose to the CARICOM heads of government that a combined approach be made to the regional telecommunication firms to eliminate roaming charges throughout the entire Caribbean region. I think that's an interesting point. So remember in the EU, they've eliminated roaming charges throughout the, um, the EU region. So the Caribbean is trying to do something similar in the, um, among the islands in the region. They indicated that they also had a national roundtable discussion that will begin in December on the development of e-commerce legislation and a draft national ICT strategy. And these discussions are tended to reflect the views of the private sector, academia, and civil society. So that's read into the record. Um, St. Vincent and Grenadine sent an update. They convened their second IGF on April 12, 2019, under the theme, The Pressing Need for Security of the Internet of Things. It was held at a school in St. Vincent, targeting student population. Key, session, key discussion points surrounded AI with IoT devices, IoT and policing, securing devices. And uh, Tran Tobago sent an update, well, a couple of updates. One that we held our TTIGF on uh, January 25th, 2019, and we'll hold our next IGF on January 31st, 2020. Um, the Internet uh, Governance Forum in Trinidad this year was. Um, using the same theme as the idea from last year, was called the Internet of Trust. And we featured three panel sessions, one on Caribbean data protection regulations, or CDPR, cultural factors in the Caribbean affecting trust and privacy for digital security, and using technology to increase trust in public institutions. We had uh, approximately 85 attendees, and the website igf.tt host the relevant documents and um, live, well, archive stream. 
And in addition to that, we had um, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union acknowledge seven technology pioneers for their contribution to Caribbean internet governance. Um, Melford Nicholas, the Minister of State for Information in Antigua and Barbuda, and President of the CTU, uh, presented Bernadette Lewis, the Secretary General of the CTU, with a special recognition for the Distinguished Service Award for Initiation and Leadership of the Caribbean Internet Governance Forum, which had its 15th anniversary. Um, we got award, awards were received by Nigel Casimir out of Toronto, Tobago, Lance Hines from Guyana, Jacqueline Morris, Toronto, Tobago, Carlton Samuels from Jamaica, Devon Antiluxing, Toronto, Tobago, and Bevel Wooding, Toronto, Tobago slash Caribbean, <laughs> also received um, Excellence in Internet Governance Awards for their pioneering work in supporting regional and global internet governance. Um, so, with that, there's an also an update from um, the Caribbean Girls Hack, and what I would like to do maybe is ask Nicole to sort of segue the yeah, 30 minutes, so I'll just get that done now, and then we move into the work plan. So Nicole, perhaps you could give an update on the Caribbean Girls Hack, and then you had a, I know you had a, um, a uh, little announcement you wanted to make regarding uh, what can happen next for us. So maybe you can, uh, Nicole, go ahead. Thank you, everybody. Um, well, let, let, let me start with the announcement first. The announcement is we need all of our small island partners working even closer with us. Um, Please, because um, I know that we had spoken last year, Maureen, there is a lot of lessons learned that we can benefit Sorry, so, um, across the different countries, uh, across even the different regions. So this year we had the Caribbean Girls Hack in five countries. Um, we got a lot of support from June, uh, really connecting us excellently. Because I, the thing is that the, there is an uh, administrative or organization infrastructure. Yeah, as uh, Rhea and I are discussing, you know, the importance of being connected not only with the IGF but also with the ISOC chapters that are in various countries and as much as we can do. And we would really like to get a lot more in um, involvement of the youth IGF and youth ISOC um, chapters as well, because you have so much that you have been doing across all of your um, your different portfolios. With Caribbean Girls Hack this year, we were in Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada. But, um, and from that, over the last three years, we've experienced a 600 and something percent increase in terms of engagement and participation, but we still have much further to go. The uh, work for the hackathon in terms of, um, the, so the idea is to upskill the girls in terms of getting them to focus on specific sustainable development goals. And this year the focus was on climate change and resilience and on gender-based violence. So with the training that they receive, which has not yet gotten to the level of coding, but that's what we're hoping for for next year and going forward and to have a more multi-year focus. Um, they created solutions themselves that they then pitch in a hackathon competition as part of the ITU's Girls in ICT Day. But it's not, I mean, our reality is in the Caribbean is that for when we have school holidays and that kind of stuff, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the day. But as Doreen Bogdan Martin from uh, ITU says, Every day is Girls in ICT Day. So one of the things that we're very excited to um, announce for next year that we're working on also too is a partnership with, uh, that we will be doing as a member of the Equal Skills Coalition where we want to um, roll out looking at doing a curriculum that will have tied with it some sort of certification. So the idea is that for the various levels of the work that the, um, the engagement that the girls will be doing, largely through webinars, so it would be online and it's a lot of self instruction that you have to do on that kind of thing, they would, able, they would be able to be getting different levels of certification and the idea is to tie that in, we're in some discussions with specific countries to tie that in so that it can allow them to 
benefit and step forward in terms of work opportunities. So we're very excited about that. Um, we're going to share with the SIDS Coalition group um, more information from that as, as it develops. Um, but I just want to just reinforce also to exactly what June was saying vis-a-vis -vis the confidence factor that, for instance, in Barbados, which was the very last hackathon that was held at the end of summer, um, that the team that came forward came forward with a gaming solution on climate change and resilience. And as I say, a gaming solution. It's not a school that or it, it is a school, school that, that once I've said, said to everybody that, that, you know, this was a winning school, everybody said, really? It wasn't the more popular, well-known schools. And that, I think, is just a reinforcement that it's not that you have to look to the academically superior or whatever it is kind of institution in terms of the future world of work. You know, and one of the things that we've been doing through the hackathon, and these girls also got through the hackathon, is that through ISOC Barbados and IGF Day, which was a smart part of Smart Barbados Week, they actually presented their solution to a whole audience of people who are in government and in development and that kind of stuff, speaking and actually, you know, delivering it. And so that has, um, in terms of their feedback to us, translated to significant confidence in terms of them speaking, you know, and, and, and being visible. Being visible, exactly, as the, the comment that, that June was mentioning. I'm very happy to see a lot more of the colleagues from Trinidad here who I um, hope to see at our next hackathon and to work even closer with you. This year we worked with the Ministry of Public Administration, so we hope to work even closer with you so that we can make sure to, to close the gap on that. Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank, Thank you, Nicole. You. Oh. All, All right, right. So, so we're going to begin our working session. session. Before, Before that, that, anything remote? remote? Colleague, Colleague from, from remote, remote, remote moderator. moderator. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Anything, anything from the remote, from the remote side? side? Any, any comments? Any, any input from Maureen? Maureen? Okay. Um, yes, yes, Maureen. I'd, like to, I'd just like to, to add. Um, and uh, just to sort of say it's absolutely fantastic to sort of like hear and be able to share, um, you know, like what's happening across our SIDS communities. And and, uh, I, and, and also I want to acknowledge um, Khan and, and Sala and Dulcie, um, you know, that uh, who are actually doing amazing uh, work in, in, um, in, in, their, you know, with, with, in the areas that they're working in. Um, but I did want to mention, um, and, I, and, I, and I really support the... Um, uh, the sort of like the raising awareness of what women in ICT are, are doing within the, within the region, and I know that it's uh, something that the um, uh, Anju and uh, Sheree in on the PICISOC board have been working very hard at sort of like making sure that you know, um, there is more awareness of um, of what you know a, a women are doing in in ICT within the Pacific, and it's, it's a very strong. It's a very strong group. I mean, when you've got, you know, sort of people like Dulcie who have, you know, like she's the former regulator um, and and uh, did some amazing work in regards to setting up the, the regulatory system within Vanuatu and she's very strong um, sort of like support for the development of internet um, in, in Vanuatu, which is one of the reasons why it's one of the, you know, sort of like leading um, Pacific nations and... Um, I think it's it's um, it, you know like I mean these sorts of things need to be um, need to be promoted, um, and of course you know like I, I, we do need to to get more support from our from our um, young the younger generation within you know who are actually sort of like looking um, you know uh, who are our you know they're the uh, the work that we want to do in the in the uh, in the region is very going to be very reliant on their involvement and we need to get their involvement sort of like in. Uh, you know, get them involved, um, you know, as much as possible. It's just that, you know, like uh, when you sort of like spread or spread so far apart, it's so difficult to sort of like make those make those um, sort of like connections and, and give them the, you know, we, it's always funding that actually sort of like prevents us from um, getting some of these amazing um, youngsters together uh, to actually sort of like uh, work uh, work together and um, to look at how we can actually move um, the internet forward. But um, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for you know, sort of like the sharing. So um, I'll let um, let Tracy get on with the business. 
All right, All thanks, Murray. So, as I said, this is a working session. I'm going to now ask um, colleagues in the tech team to bring up, back up the agenda. All right, so right now we just, that's the report and the sharing. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, yes Salah. Salah. Just give him, the, 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 we have to have a mic. Can you tell me to get a mic, Salah? Testing. Go ahead. With your permission, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, Salah Nieta Tamani Kamara for the transcripts, or Salah for short. Uh, I'd just like to, this is just um, a petition, I suppose, to the coordinators of the Dynamic Coalition. Uh, and I'm only making this intervention because there are three MEG here now. Mm -hmm. And uh, as someone who used to serve on uh, the global MEG and who's left, and this is in terms of strategic uh, movement forward for the Dynamic Coalition. Um, so you know how at a country level or territory level, for example, we, in the Pacific, we have 27 countries and territories with CCTLDs, but... Um, not all of them are nation states within the UN. Some are territories under New Zealand and that sort of thing. But it doesn't make them any less as far as we're concerned, as far as the SIDS is concerned, right? So you know how governments in their own country or the countries themselves uh, have sovereignty and are in charge of their development and they rely on, um, on global development agencies like the World Bank. Uh, for example, Tuvalu right now in uh, the Pacific has just signed on uh, uh, projects with the World Bank where they've had a five-year uh, five funding to build infrastructure. Or even as my friend Kenan from Kiribati was saying, within two years they're laying their first global submarine uh, cable. Uh, so in terms of an international uh, you know, the development agenda level, one of the things I'd like to put to the uh, dynamic coalition, and again, this is all of us, right? If we can work on in the future to uh, put together publication, like before the next uh, IGF in Poland, like the case studies from all the countries. And so for example, like we have the women in STEM or women, the girl hack that's happening in uh, Barbados. And I just wanted to say, um, you know, development, the Google search engine or the search engine literally came out of a developing country, Barbados, right? The guy who first designed the search engine came from a small island developing state. And I'd just like to point out something that, uh, that the former Vice President of Qatar Airways said on Monday at the Amelia's uh, panel. This is what he said. Look, you don't have to look to developed countries for how to, to build, because you have the capacity within yourselves. And so our strength is in our synergy as um, my friend from uh, Girl Hack Barbados was saying. And so and this is one of the things I want to put to the DC coalition, apart from the publication, having a global public repository where we can actually store this, this uh, who's doing what, for example. So for example, Vanuatu sent, they've been sending uh, girls teams to the robotic uh, competitions in Dubai every year, right Dalsi? Yeah, and, and uh, there are women in STEM initiatives also in the Pacific. So things like that, so we can streamline and better leapfrog. So one of the things we would like to put to the Dynamic Coalition, if you wish, uh, Credo Global is available to assist in creating this global public repository to, um, you know, to sort of, and also assist with the compiling the case studies in collaboration eh, with whoever wants to volunteer. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say from a very practical level, I am tired of seeing our countries beg for, for funding to build uh, infrastructure like global submarine cables, um, satellites. Like in the Pacific where we have the biggest ocean in the world, two thirds, Pacific is two thirds of the world's ocean. Um, and so, you know, even with the satellite, you've got KCU bend apart from that, this uh, satellite networks, apart from the, the uh, cable, uh, you know, the submarine cables. 
But I'm, I'm tired of seeing us beg for the, the funds. And we've, we've had how many IGFs where we've heard of community networks and solutions, and it came out in the day zero session. Like people like Glenn McKnight, who are rolling out cheap models of community network, and even ISOC, who do amazing stuff in Africa and that sort of thing. And so I think the level of cohesion and collaboration that needs to occur uh, can actually be catalyzed from the dynamic coalition. Does it make sense? And so here we have, and I'm sorry I'm taking long, but I think it's important I say it with the three Megs and everybody else in the room. You have the Secretary General directing the Meg to comply with the Addis Ababa action agenda, right? And within the UN, you have the second committee that deals with infrastructure funding. So in other words, African Development Bank, Asian Development Bank, the regions of uh, finances, finances of infrastructure, they come to the UN Second Committee to listen to what's going to be prioritized. And a colleague from Trinidad and Vanuatu sort of said that, look, as far as foreign policy and statecraft is concerned, and we all know this, we've been advocating in this space for a long time, uh, ICT just doesn't make it to the, uh, um, for small island states to Geneva and in Brussels and New York. Why? Because the resources are so constrained, the technical capacity needed is not there. So even though you have technical capacity on the ground, but it's missing from where it needs to happen, the advocacy in Geneva, the advocacy in New York. So this is what I propose, guys, that we host us, Dynamic Coalition, guys. Woohoo! rock on. Anyway, just kidding, that was just to uh, warm up the, I mean, to bring the, not to make it too serious, I say we host a symposium in Geneva and, uh, and in New York. We leverage on our networks. We build our portfolio case studies and we tell them where we want things going. And so in other words, this is what I'm saying. We just don't want to come and talk about what needs to be done, but we can have the capacity to influence and direct funding where it needs to go. Does it make sense? and also share the, to, to pivot off the lessons from people like Glenn McKnight or, or local community networks that are already being rolled out that we know nothing about. That somebody from Christmas Island, you're on the peak I suck list, uh, Tracy. You've seen Christian talking about how he wants stuff on Christmas Island, but they can't afford it. Yeah, so just that. And with that, I, I rest. Thank you. Thank you. And you actually, it's a very good segue into the, the, the working session. Um, so we have 21 minutes and 41 seconds left. So what I'd like to do is, um, there, there are just a couple items we, we're gonna be doing now. So there is an action plan that was created last year. Let me get this to work. There we go. And maybe I get the screen up. I don't know if people can see this. All right, let me see, can I get it any larger? How does this work? Can I make a comment while you're finding sure. that particular? Go ahead, comment. Uh, um, yes, it's going to last, Brink. And uh, certainly, Salah's comments about uh, uh, community networks and building infrastructure are really important. But hand in hand goes digital literacy, cyber safety. And we, we really need to combine those. So it's, it's, it's not just saying, OK, the infrastructure is vital. Just as vital is, uh, is making sure that people who haven't been exposed very much to the internet applications and so forth go in and use it safely and in an effective manner. Thank you. So hang on. So let's, let's, let's get this going and we could insert. The idea is to get some stuff inserted into this action plan. So everything that's song names coming out so far sounds like items to go into the plan. So let's move the plan through and we can insert as we go along. I guess I'll be the one typing, but I'm gonna rely on my, I've lost, we've lost one, but rely on my rapporteurs to, to give me some um, documentation of what's happening now. So as you can see in this plan, we had a few items to get going. Um, we've, the ones that are crossed off have happened already. So I'll share this with the list again. Um, but now we have a f five more things on our 10-point list. 
Item one is development of a website. So one of the things that we need to do as a DC, and this is some practical stuff to get going, is to develop a website. Otherwise, we'll be just talking at these meetings. So we need to get some platform built, um, whether it be we're utilizing an existing platform and, and use that as a website, or we're going to build our own website. Um, that's something we need to get done. And the action is, as you can see on the right-hand side, volunteers required. So I heard Credo Global volunteering to do things. So let's see if that's going to be one volunteer that's, that's added to the mix. Anybody else want to volunteer? Nicole Peter Patterson volunteers personally to build a website. Great. So I'm going to start having my scribes, um, rapporteurs take that note. Good. So that's so the, I, the current time frame is to start from today, November 2019, and get it done by January 2020. So can we get commitment on that? January 2020, have something up at DC SID's website, or is that too ambitious? That's right. And I also think that I, I did hear that the, sec the secretary is hosting, temporarily hosting stuff in the meantime, so we could probably right. use that to, to start with, but we'll see. Yeah. Even if we got independent hosting or use the secretariat hosting, but if we can get one of our CCTLDs, or if we don't want the CCTLDs, um, we could get like a .org. Uh, somebody, the CCTLDs can actually sponsor. I'm just, sorry, CCTLD operators. <laughs> I'm just asking if they could kindly uh, sponsor the hosting for .org. That, let's use .org, I'm suggesting, not dictating. Um, <laughs> Yes, for, for us to host the website. And really, what we need is a sitemap, and it can really be built. I shouldn't talk for, about the builder, but like, if we all collaborate and design the, the content, it shouldn't take long. Good. So Gen 2020 is not a... So this is, so this, is not, this is not an ambitious target, so January 2020. So can we agree on... Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm going to literally ask us to adopt the action plan, what they did, so... I'm assuming that we are adopting that by January 2020, we'll have an, a website. Yes, any objections? Any burning desires to not have that date locked in? All right, hearing no objections, I shall move on. All right, so item seven is an establishment of platform to support. I, so this is exactly what Sala, there's a burning, burning statement to be made. Go ahead. Tracy, um, okay, establishing the website, but we also have to um, deal with content for the website. Yes, thanks, Dan. But, yeah, so that the, 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 I don't want to break everything else out, but yeah, that's, that's the item. So to do logos, that's, we have a whole set of things to, to um, get going under that, that rubric. So you still think the data is reasonable, given that? Yes, Salah for the record volunteering to help with the content and also the uh, site map. Not right. volunteering to build it, but volunteering to uh, get the content from archived things in the IGF Secretariat and working with Tracy Hackshaw, of course. Thanks yeah. for volunteering me, Sala. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, the, the more substantial item is the platform to support IGFs in Citri. So this is sort of dovetailing in a bit with what you, you started talking about, not exactly. So this original action item was to ensure that we get more IGFs going in the regions, so in the Caribbean Pacific regions, and having that platform, meaning that for those who already have them established, um, trying to make for example, uh, Vanua to the Pacific IGF, the Caribbean IGF, etc., to work with the other countries and territories to get their IGFs going as well. So as you would have heard with the UN's uh, report, and it seems as if it's going in this direction, the IGF Plus um, seems to be the favored direction where the global list of IGFs grows to such an extent that that becomes the, 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 the sort of the intercessional work that's being done around the world. And if that in fact is what triggers in 2025 and beyond, then we want to ensure that every single territory within the SIDS has an IGF working, and ideally even a regional IGF 
or sub-regional as the case may be. So this platform across Pacific Caribbean, Indian Ocean, uh, I don't know if you, again, I'm not sure, is that, is that a correct statement that you're on the Indian Ocean or is it on the African side, Maldives? Indian Ocean, so the Indian Ocean territories, and of course those in the, closer to Africa, we have to get them involved as well, to get their IGFs moving, funding, um, content, toolkits, you know, best practices, etc. I'm looking now, I'm not sure the word is volunteers, consensus that we will work towards that within the, the, the DC SIDS, and this is not going to be easy. Try and find a, a way, I was going to suggest a subcommittee of sorts to kind of work on this, to get it going, yes. If I could just make a comment on the number eight, like several things you said there. One was to support the national regional IGFs. Eh? So when you were saying that, did you mean in terms of technical capacity where we share human resources? Because that's certainly one. And we've already been doing it. We've gotten the Caribbean into the Pacific mm -hmm. um, and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, and I was thinking we need to break that down when we say uh, provide a platform. Um, so it could be exchange of human resources, one. Mm -hmm. The other thing you said was supporting the NRIs to allow the national initiatives. So at the moment, when the local NRIs, eh, Delsi can uh, uh, elaborate, when uh, countries want to do their IGFs, they have to rely on uh, local sponsors, obviously, like the telcos and the ISPs or the CCTLD operators, but also they are able to reach out to ICANN or ISOC or to um, IGFSA, which is run by Marcus Kuma. But I would just want to say those funds are drying out, you know what I mean? And they're not sustainable, which is why I really liked uh, your TT Meg chair, the comments that he made, like looking for ways. But if we were to, to do a global uh, fund pool for that, that's certainly something, uh, Tracy, that the committee could look into. Eh? Um, but also in terms of the sharing, yeah, I think I'll stop there for now. All right, so can we agree that we're gonna establish some sort of, I wouldn't ask the entire DC set to do this because I'm not sure that will be reasonable, but a coalition of the willing within the coalition. Um, so I'm hearing Sal already volunteering. And can I just say sorry? So? We have the head of the Japan ISP Association here. You know, most people don't know he's head of the Japan ISP Association. I only know that because I'm from the region. And he's the most influential. I hope you didn't regret coming here now. <laughs> oh, no. We love you, you know. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, when we look at ourselves, we don't see ourselves as grasshoppers, right? Like, it's not what's in our pocket. Because if you look at what's in our pocket as a DC, it's, we're probably in deficit, right, Tracy? <laughs> But we don't look at our pocket. We look at the, uh, the collaborative pool, the collaborative bucket. And we have Singapore, Japan, Mauritius. And even if we don't have the financial capital, we certainly have the human capital. RIA, you know? And you know what I mean? And so I was thinking, if we map what we have and pivot on that, oh my goodness, watch out Poland IGF and development. The, the nations are rising. Does it make sense? It so is. that's what, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, yeah, we, we really got to get our act together and stop begging and start dictating how things should be run. And I know that the three new MEG IGF members are going to really be assertive. So it's going to be awesome. All right. Any further thoughts on that? <laughs> Japan, I guess, wants to add anything? Uh, yes, I. I, I, I will do my best also. And <laughs> probably we can, uh, um, on behalf of myself, uh, probably we can uh, support many things. And also I will try the best in the Japan to the, get the, some money or the, probably other things, uh, technical issues or something. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Ria, Ria wants to Ria? I want to endorse what Salah is saying, but I want to take, on a, take it a slightly differently. I actually think that we should be doing a SIDS IGF on our own. And with a SIDS IGF, uh, if you will, we, we will actually be able to, to ventilate many of our issues in a more specific way, much like what the global IGF is doing. Um, but 
very much related explicitly to our own reality. And in doing that, if we create certain roundtables uh, to cross-pollinate our related issues, then we begin to find singular lines of collaborative opportunities. Uh, and if we bring all SIDS, wealthy or not, into the room, uh, then we find our own SIDS financing opportunities uh, where they already have sight to some of the issues related to the poorer SIDS operations. Uh, and then that becomes not just a fertilization point for financial resources, but also a fertilization and incubation point for human capacity cross-fertilization. So I just want to throw that in. So if we, uh, so that's a... Uh, that so I would volunteer to. Right, so we have a volunteer. Yes, I vote, as George says, I, I, I what's, it, what's the correct phrase? I vote that nomination cease. Yes. And so Ria is volunteering, Ria Yoching. Volunteering to lead that initiative. She can't do it by herself, obviously, but certainly she would lead the... And Nicole is volunteering to, to help. Fantastic. Excellent. And Salas. All right, so let's. So, all, all uh, rapporteurs, are we get, get grabbing these names? Sasala, Ria, Dalsi, Nicole, all to help with the SIDS IGF and the platform. All right. And Japan, ICT, ISPs. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And, and if I can add one that? thing, uh, let me add one thing. I think we should locate this uh, in a strategic way so that we do have our donor collaboration uh, partners at the table as well, if not in a physical vicinity, but strategically placed. All right, perfect. So, yes. As far as I, I saw June first, and then we can go to Nicole. Yeah, June. Can you get? You need to get the mic because it's yeah. yeah. I was just saying you can add me as a volunteer in some small capacity, because we've got all these big experts here. I, you know. Accepted. <laughs> Nicole. Um, two things I just want to say. Uh, Sala, in terms of what you had um, mentioned vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, pulling together people in Geneva, I mean, that's part of where um, I'm saying to Rhea that I would be happy to volunteer on this because one of the things that I'm going to be doing when I'm back in Geneva, which is where I'm based, is pulling together a Caribbean group of the of the missions. And we had very strong engagement from the ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago, Ambassador Antoine Cambridge here with Equal. So um, I, I think we, I, I'm saying to Ria that I think we have the opportunity also to bring an even bigger group. That that group was there was focused specifically on equals and gender issues, but we have an opportunity to pull together the um, SIDS missions, if we want to call them that. Um, so I'd be very happy to give that contribution on, on that side to, to pull that together with Ria. Thank you. And Nic others. Thank you, Nicole. Accepted. Go ahead, Salah. You could just use, we need to use the mic though, I forget, please. Yeah. I do apologize for the for the but we're very resourceful just, here, so we'll yes. figure it out. Just before Delphi speaks, just to respond. Um, you remember the Fiji missions, Fiji ambassador. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we convened the other IGF in Geneva, mm -hmm. we hosted the SIDS. Um, the zero event. Yes, the zero event. And so that opened the pathway. We got Bevel in to meet her as well. And so that's really excellent with the Trinidadian mission. So we've already got the network to pull it through. So I think we should just do it. Yes. And here's Dulcie. Yes, we have five minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, the, so we have a SEDS IGF plan, we have a platform to get IGFs going in all of the SIDS territories as well. Um, item eight, which is sort of an offshoot of that, was to get specific, specific IGFs and ICT events going. That was 
so then that we determined was a, a peculiar need that needed to be established. Um, since the, the passing net, pack net, passing net, pack net, yeah, that we need that that seems to have disappeared. Um, that was identified by pick that pick I sought to to get going again. Um, but that sounds as if we could pull that pull that together with the previous action item and make that happen along the way. Although the passing nets, I believe, are not necessarily IGFs. They are a little different, but we, the group could discuss that. Um, I know Maureen wants to speak just before we finish, so that means if I could wrap the, the last two items up. Um, and this, again, bleeds from what we just spoke about, developing a, basically a platform for action going forward from here. Um, so we have a five-year plan developed, documented, and, and sort of presented, perhaps at the IGF itself, even broader than that. I'm looking for either another committee to do, deal with that or someone to lead this, to develop a research and action agenda for SIDS in the internet economy 2019 to 2024. Um, anybody is willing to take this forward. This is now not just the, the, the events or the, the, the funding and so on. This is the actual documentation of a of an action agenda, research and action agenda. Anybody willing to take that lead? Well, let's, let's um, we didn't introduce yourself, so let's get the mic to my colleague from Vanva too. Hi, I'm uh, Jeff Garay. I, I'm, I represent the SIT of Vanuatu and also the chair to uh, Vanuatu IGF. Um, I saw the agenda and uh, it does sound interesting and while it is a big thing, but I volunteer myself for the, uh, to take initiative for that uh, as I'm pretty much interested in uh, research and development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. But I, but I need a big team to work on that as research is a very, very big thing. All right, so we have Jeff volunteering. I, I, I want to volunteer the um, Harvard student from here. Volunteer the Harvard school being volunteered from Egypt, yes. It will help with the studies. <laughs> Dalsi is volunteering, so Dalsi. Salah volunteers. Wow, okay, so let, let's just give the names so that we'll, we'll yeah. We need to have documented. Just, just pass the mic, someone, pass the mic to. Pass the mic to the front, just to get the names on the record, who else is volunteering. And I'm going to, so basically that's the, so before we adopt the, the action plan, I, need, I know Maureen would like to have a, a word, so I'm going to ask Maureen to, to speak shortly. Just get your names for the rapporteurs. Just give the names. Mike. Faye Samuel, Jamaica. Faye Samuel, Jamaica. Amelia from Fiji. Amelia from Fiji. Anyone else volunteering for the research and action agenda? I'll just add my name, Mohammed Al Khatib. Mohammed Khatib. El Khatib. El Khatib from e -L -K -H -A -T -E -B, Egypt. E L K H A T W E B. All right, excellent. And Jeffrey Garay from Vanuatu. Jeffrey, spell his name for the record. G A R A E. A E. Jeffrey Garay from Vanuatu. Maureen. Uh, I know you'd like to say something. Go ahead, Maureen. We can't hear. Let's get the volume up a little higher. Can you get the volume? We can't hear you so well. Can then it's also volunteer. Go ahead, Maureen, because we can hear you. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Is it better? Soft. Volume up from remote. Volume, volume. That's it, that's, that's the maximum, maximum volume. volume. Okay, all right, okay, all right. thank we you. Hear you, you hear you now, yes, Maureen, go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tracy, and thank you for the, to the team that's, um, that's gathered here today. It's been absolutely brilliant. I love the brainstorming session, and I certainly love the, the, um, the active volunteering that actually took place um, just now. Um, it's, really, it's really great to see. Um, I really like the idea of, you know, I mean, and we did sort of like think, talk about it last year, um, but we didn't get the website um, set up. So if we could get some volunteers to, oh, well, I think we have established a volunteer for that, but a website would be so valuable um, 
if we could set it up so that the content actually came from the communities, um, you know, from the different regions. And um, I think that, uh, you know, at, at uploading regular updates of what is actually happening in our regions, as Sala suggested, um, and so that uh, we can actually sort of, uh, if we've got if we've got our um, our our uh, content, our our objectives for what we're trying to achieve in, in each of the different regions, um, and it's out there, you know, like we put it in the in the face of uh, donors and sponsors who might be want to um, to support to support us. Um, I really support the idea of having a um, a SIDS IGF. Um, you know, like so that we're actually talking about our own issues. Uh, we're talking about what's important to us and with regards to internet development. But um, uh, and, and I think we should actually set that um, yeah, definitely set that as a DC goal. Um, but um, I also think it's important that in order to you know we're all you know a lot of com we're coming from developing countries um, and that we need to sort of like establish um, a SIG. We need to sort of like build capacity within our, you know, within our sort of like region to, so that when we actually have an IGF, we're actually getting people who are informed, who understand what the, uh, you know, like issues that concern them. They can sort of like, they know what sort of like uh, what they need to bring, the kind of information that they need to bring from their various communities um, into, into such a thing as our um, IGF. Um, and also a SIG because you're actually sort of like building capacity, it would actually help us to establish our youth groups, our women's groups, um, sort of like strengthen those, um, and also to sort of like look at um, how they can contribute towards a more tra um, successful translocation into the internet economy, which is what we actually want. Um, and, you know, I, I really have uh, appreciated this, um, this session. It's probably, it's, I, I have to say it has been one of our best. Um, uh, we've only done two, um, but the the fact that it's sort of like you know a real collaborative um, um, effort here, and it's been a, a brilliant opportunity for everybody to share what they're doing. And um, even though I'm sort of like sitting here in my little warm little spot in uh, the Cook Islands, um, I have really appreciated uh, sort of like sharing, uh, being well, being able to share with you um, in this session. And thank you, Tracy, for for running it so well and for everyone for contributing. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Marina. Marina. Thanks, Thanks for contributing. Really appreciate it, especially that hour in the morning, Cook Islands. Um, so we run out of time. Has anyone else on remote wanted to say anything? Just by the way, just make sure we get the remote people. All right. So I, um, I was reminded by my colleague Ria that we may not know everyone in the room. So I'm going to ask Beg Abigail to help me by collecting email addresses and name some people. Do you happen to have anything that you could do it with quickly, like, uh, I guess, your laptop or piece of paper or something? Uh, so if you can sc either scribble it for her or she'll grab it. Um, I know many in the room, but I don't think I know everyone. So email addresses and names so we don't lose track of the what's happening here. I'm going to add, I'm going to force add all of you all to the SIDS, DC SIDS. So look out for that invitation and please accept the invite when it comes. Um, so bear that in mind. Salah? Yes, Tracy, Amelia just suggested that you put up your email address and they email it to you. That's an option as well, sure. Um, let's see if we can get it collected now, but my email address will be. Yeah. A... Please don't spam me. <laughs> Can I just get the screen back up on tech team? It's gonna write it up here. So you can send it to Tracy. Tracy. With, it's the German keyboard, so it's a little challenging for me. At, <laughs> I can't get the accent to work. Can we please include everyone's role in their country uh, once you, as you write your name and information? All right, so it's upside down. Right. right. So Tracy at sign, not because I can't put, I can't seem to get the at sign to work. Hackshow.org, send it to that address. Easy, easy enough. All right. But just, let's try and collect them if we can today as well. Appreciate that. All right. And with that, I'm going to um, adjourn the session. Thank you so much for coming, and I appreciate the 
I assume that the action plan has been adopted, so let's acclaim that and clap. Thank you so much. <laughs>